No, nope, that's my coffee. No, thank you. But there's some garlic. Be careful, it might give you some very bad breath. Hey guys, it's Claire. I'm one half of the Ormwoods. Welcome back to all of you that have been joining our journey every Sunday. And if you're new here, uh, my husband and I, Dawn, we're a folk rock duo called the Ormwoods. And last year when everything kind of got shut down and our gigs got canceled, we decided to turn our creative energies into really maximizing the most of our very small backyard suburban garden here in North Atlanta, Zone 7B. And uh, last year we had a lot of successes, but even more failures. But we were really struck with how much you can do. And because we kind of consider ourselves city people, we were in the city for almost 20 years with like no yard, no land. Um, it's been really fun for us to discover this aspect. And we decided this year to film our journey every Sunday and put it out there with the hopes of just inspiring other people who may not consider themselves homesteaders or have a farm and you know a bunch of kids and all the animals but to realize still how much you can do even in the suburbs even on a you know small plot of land so we're hoping to inspire other people to give growing food a try and today i just wanted to talk to you guys about garlic because we pulled up a bunch of garlic about i don't know five or six weeks ago we dried it in some racks in our basement and it dried really beautifully. And um, yesterday we had a major potato fail, which made me realize I need to go ahead and take care of my garlic. Um, I went outside before it rained yesterday. We've been having so much rain here in zone 7B. I don't know if anyone else is experiencing that. I guess if you're on the Northwest, you're in the middle of a heat wave. So sorry, I'm not trying to rub that in. And we hope you guys are okay. Um, but it's been a lot of wet weather for us. Um, and so I went to pull the potatoes that we were drying in and there was about a quarter inch of water that was on the bottom of the dish, that we, not the dish, the box that we were drying the potatoes in and the whole bottom layer was rotted. And I have to say it was the, the foulest stench I have ever experienced in my entire life. I don't know that I will ever get rid of that smell so I had to toss so many of our homegrown potatoes. I've tried to save the last remaining few, but you know, we planted enough potatoes that we definitely should have gotten a year's worth out of them and we just didn't. And now that we've lost half the crop, definitely haven't. So we're gonna have to work on our potato game. But it made me think I gotta get the garlic in. So up until about 30 minutes ago, these were the garlic stalks that were attached to the garlic bulb. And I took my little, pruners which just you know look like this and just snipped off the top and then snipped off garlic will have like those little hairs at the bottom and just snip those off trim them up this will all go back into our compost so what you don't want to do when you're cleaning up your garlic is you don't want to use any type of wet cloth you don't want to introduce moisture into the product that you've been trying to dry out so that it can store the reason is the moisture will introduce bacteria and then you can't store it for very long. So what I like to do after I trim them up is I just like to try to peel some of the paper skins off. And a lot of times the dirt's just on that outest layer. And so once you can get this peeled off, it's good to go. And you don't have to worry about any moisture. If you can't get all the dirt off, honestly, it's okay. It'll store fine. But you definitely just don't wanna get these all dried and then use a wet towel or a wet cloth or God forbid, put them under the sink. Um, so yeah, so this one, this is a really great example. It just really cleaned up very, it cleaned up very, very nicely. So I've got an entire bowl of these and then some to do. So that's what I'm gonna do this morning and I'm not sure if we'll include any video from last night or not, but I'll say this just in case we do so that I have the footage. We had a bunch of uh, high school kids over last night for a make your own pizza party. And Is it coming? It's we'll get it by the end of tonight. <laughs> well, I, I believe. Start. Whoever has you night know night what, night. I think before we leave for Mancan, this dough will be ready. And 
and it was just so fun. And being able to just see the garden get used and and played in and, and just enjoy, not just for us for food, but by the young kids was just really, really satisfying. So I don't know if any of you can relate to that, just how much joy garden brings you, not just from a place of food, but the fact that it's beautiful and it's an environment that people of all ages want to be in. You know, there's just something really grounding about Mother Nature. So anyways, okay, so this is a garlic. Let me show you this real quick. This garlic has kind of like what looks like a black. I don't know if this camera's going to focus. Let's see. It looks kind of blackish. Can you see that? I don't know if that's a little bit of mold. I'm not really sure what that is. But let me peel off some layers and see if it looks any better. So we're taking my son to his week-long marching band camp today. And then we will have two days without any kids in the house. So my daughter's with her dad. And it's such a weird experience to not have either a kid here. I really don't even know what we're gonna do with the time. <laughs> Looks like it might rain again, so we might not be outdoors. My initial goal with the garlic was to just preserve it and then use it as we need, because I love to just chop up fresh garlic. Having said that, now that we've lost all these potatoes, to be honest, my mind is going in a very different direction. I'm feeling like, you know what, I don't wanna risk losing the harvest. I think maybe we should be whipping up some garlic olive oil, some garlic butter, maybe dehydrate some and make garlic powder. You know, what could we do to just go ahead and process this so that we don't lose any of it? So that's kind of on my mind right now. If you are an experienced garlic grower, I would really like to hear how you manage that because it was very disheartening to have to lose all those potatoes. And to be honest, because of the rain, we've lost a lot of tomatoes already too. We've had some tomatoes and they just have terrible blossom end rot. Blossom end rot is when the bottom of your tomato is like black and it looks really gross. Like you'll, it, you'll know something is like not quite right. And a lot of people think that blossom end rot on your tomatoes is because of a calcium deficiency. And so then they'll go and put calcium in the soil, but really that's not exactly what it is. Blossom end rot is a result of not getting enough getting so much water in the dirt that it waterlogs the tomato plant's roots and then the tomato plant can't uptake calcium. So it's not necessarily about not having enough calcium in your soil, it's about the plant can't utilize it because it's too waterlogged. And tomato plants really like to have a drier environment. So you're better off to water a tomato plant twice a week really well, like water it really well, than to give it water every single day. And unfortunately, with the amount of rain we're having, our tomato plants are getting rain every single day. So I don't think the roots are ever really getting a chance to dry out. So that's been a little bit of a bummer too, but it does give you an appreciation for food <laughs> and um, what it takes to grow food. And, you know, we're at least lucky. We're trying to be self-sufficient, but at the end of the day, you know, if we lose our tomatoes or we lose our potatoes, we're still lucky enough to be down the street from a zillion other farmers, farmers markets, all kinds of places that we can support to stock up. We were just kind of hoping to do as much of it for ourselves as we could. So here's that garlic that I peeled. Let's see if you can see that. Garlic's really pretty. Wish you could smell it. So thanks all for all the comments that you've been giving us and sharing with us. It's really interesting to hear your stories I really like just learning about people, learning about you, learning about where you live, what your goals are. Some of you are former gardeners, some of you are beginning gardeners, some of you are super, super actively experienced. Um, every one of you has something to share with us, has something to offer us that's you know enriching our journey and we just really like the comments. So keep those coming. We answer everyone, although sometimes we get a lot and we get a little bit behind, so don't give up on us if that happens. But um, we're really having a good time making these videos for you. So thanks for being along for the ride. And we'll kind of do a walkthrough of the garden in a minute just so you can see where everything is. Not a whole lot has changed. And check back next Sunday, okay?